So now that we've got the 2D alignment set, it, set up in the software, we can, uh, as I showed, point to a particular uh, point on the blade. It doesn't work so well at the extremes of the image, um, you'll find. Uh, actually, that's not working as I expect because I've moved over to define scan points mode. Um, I can define the points individually using this icon, um, and or I can define them using a polygon. So if I was to define them individually, I can move the laser beam around. And in this case, we've we've um, maybe I can still yeah I can still scan the I can still drag the laser beam around with a with a middle mouse button click get it on a point that might be for example point number one on my structure and I can manually create a point um, on a per point basis it's a bit laborious but if I wanted to get points at point one two three four five that we've already defined on the structure and extract the geometry from those which this software will do for me I can drive to point number one I can right click on point number one and I can say make me a point at the laser position. Now I get a point at the laser position. See as a result of the, sort of the problem with the 2D alignment it's not perfect. It's much better in the middle. That point isn't exactly where my laser beam is. So we could, we could do a bit better with 2D alignment than we've done. And you would maybe want to do that if you were interested in what's happening at either side of the blade. Um, if I move it to somewhere in the middle, you'll see that the 2D alignment is going to be much better in here. So now if I right-click again and do point at the laser beam position, you'll see that point sits right on the laser beam position. The point is defined in terms of the camera and the image, and, and it's that that we've attempted to align with the scanning system. Okay, and it's pretty good in the middle, not so good at the extremes. I'm actually not going to do it point by point, because as I say, that's quite laborious. So we'll, we'll control A which is selecting all points and we'll hit the delete button and then we will go to the standard method of defining points which is um, using polygon or some other geometrical shape which is defined from the um, top taskbar so we can, we can make uh, like a, a polygon as we call it around the blade and this can be fairly rough, you know, and double click at the end to close it. And you can see it automatically starts to put some points in a grid form that's defined by what I've got specified over here. So I can change that to like a spider web circular grid, hexagonal grid, which is probably better for this kind of a shape. Or I can also uh, have it do it somewhat or like irregular in nature, like if I choose that many, it's still sort of really adhering to that uh, hexagonal grid. The thing that you can also do with the hexagonal grid is you can rotate it um, a little bit, you can change the density. You can do this with, with many of them. So I'm not gonna do, I mean, that's there, uh, we've got, uh, does it tell me how many points? 741 points. That would be a long measurement campaign, clearly. And we don't need that, like the, the number of points you need is a function of, of the, upper frequency limit that you, or the, the highest frequency mode shape that you're interested in. For the first three or four bending modes of this beam and uh, this blade and the torsional mode, we might need 40 or 50 measurement points. So we, we can significantly reduce the density. Um, clearly we want probably more than the eight points that, that this grid comes up with. Um, and, and you can make this process as complicated as you wish we can have points on the outside we can just have points around the outside points in the middle points on the outside both and then you can see that you know there are sort of some points here which are quite close together which is not particularly good you know we've got large spacing in here and quite quite closely spaced points in between um, we can go back into the automatic mode or the APS mode sorry and edit each of these points individually from this, uh, this regular scan that we've defined. So once, if, if you, like now that it's deselected, you'll notice if I'm off here, this is all greyed out and that's because it's not selected. So it needs to be selected. I can have, you know, some rotation if I want. I can have probably a grid that's maybe even somewhat rectangular and maybe just have, yeah, points on the inside. You can have different uh, density inside and in X and Y, um, 
over here and so you know it's at some point we kind of are going to get maybe let's have too much density five five this isn't a brilliant grid but it's getting somewhere near right so I can also do boolean operations so I can create a polygon I can create automatic polygon polygon sorry the boolean sorry boolean operation I can draw another polygon inside this one and you can see that now I've got like a different grid inside to so this one so if I had a break disk let's say that had, you know it was interested in a, like a ring around the outside but not in the middle I could have two circles and I could have different densities in each of those circles. I can also remove what's inside of that grid using this hide points function here. I'll still get points around the edge, but I can also turn those off you know, and, and so on. So you've got various options to control how you build this grid and you can be quite elaborate and spend a lot of time building, building a grid. Um, and they're individual, they're still feature based, they're individual, you know, you can select one and delete it, you can edit them individually, um, or you can just you know, start with an automatic polygon maybe, um, which like tries to do image detection, edge detection in software, and depending upon the nature of your image and the background and everything else, it might do a nice job or it it might not, and you can see in this case, you know, it's not doing a brilliant job, but we can play around with the settings here for edge detection to tolerance, polygon quality. I haven't looked at this uh, functionality very much, but there's some relatively sophisticated stuff in there. Um, and if, you know, then, then each of these polygons, we can define uh, the density and so on. Again, um, you can be quite elaborate with that. You can see that that's also a feature and they're individual, right? So that, that's a polygon in there, that little bit of geometry. Um, and we can rescale it and all kinds of things. So actually let's d ditch all of that lot. Let's go back to, uh, sorry, uh, a fairly quick polygon, put some points in it and get on with the measurement. How's that for time? Eight minutes. Okay. So I'm going to just restart the video in a moment, but let's do that.